Well, g'day guys, I'm Ryan Eagleton, and today what we're going to do is something traditional for you. It's Anzac Day in Australia, and we've decided to make the Aussie damper. Now, we're going to do it two ways for you today. We're going to do it one in the campfire oven over there where the fire's going so great now, and then we're also going to do it in the oven inside, and we're going to show you and tell you which one we like, well, we like the best, and you can tell me in your comments which one's your favourite. So here we go. All right guys, first things first, you've got to get a good fire going. And then what you need is the ashes and coals from that fire. And while your fire's going, chuck your little camp oven right next to it so it slowly preheats it. So most of your job's done before you actually start cooking. Today we're using self-raising flour to make the damper. Now the reason why we use self-raising flour is that we don't have to add anything else to it to make it rise. It's got it all included in itself. And this one kilo tub will actually make two dampers nice and easy. So that's what we're doing today. All right guys, so the first thing we need to do is to throw in three cups of self-raising flour. All right, now the next thing we need to do is chuck in 80 grams of whole butter. I'm using the salted butter because I like the taste of salt and it's easier to use. I've also diced it up so it's nice and small so that you can knead it through the flour a lot easier. The next ingredient we need to use is one pinch of salt. The Saxa table salt here in front is fine. Easy to use. All right guys, now that we've added the butter to the flour and also the salt, it's time to start kneading the butter through the flour. All right, so we're going to squeeze the butter into all the flour, make it join, and it's going to take about two minutes to do this. So we're looking for a breadcrumb-like consistency. All right, guys, now that is the finished product of once the flour and the, uh, the butter has been pressed together. So it looks like breadcrumbs, as you can tell, and it's nice and easy, nice and easy to go through your hands like that, nice consistency. Now what we need to add is water. Though in lieu of water, what I like what I like to use is beer. So what we're going to do guys is we're going to add 3 quarters of a cup of beer as opposed to the water and the yeast in the beer will also help it rise. So once you've got your 3 quarter cup of beer, pour that into the mixture. Now you can either add it all or you can add it a bit at a time. It's not really gonna to make too much of a difference because if you do make a mistake, you can add a slightly little bit of flour to rectify this at, this, at that stage. Now I always find it easier guys just to grab a knife, just an, an, a round nose knife and just run it through the mixture. And we do that so that it doesn't stick to your fingers or anything like that. It just makes it nice and easy. And then you'll find it'll all just bind together all right, so after about 20 seconds of stirring, as you can tell, it's starting to get uh, a lot more of a solid consistency. And a good test, guys, at this stage is, is to put your finger in and see whether or not it's sticking to your finger. Now, as you can see, it's still sticking to mine, so we need to keep going with the stirring and maybe add just a little bit more flour. Alright guys, now since that was a little bit sticky, I've just put another tablespoon of flour in and we'll do the same process with that again and see how it ends up. This is the beauty of this recipe guys, like you can make mistakes, you can add more beer, add more water, add more flour. It's not, a, uh, it's not something that you've overcooked or burnt straight away and it's wrecked. Another little test. All right, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to be able to press an indent into our mix and not have it stick to our finger. So that's good to go. All right, guys, now we're, we're rolling it up into a ball now that we've got the texture correct. And once we've got it into like a nice little ball, we can just sit it up, sit it up on our board and start to just flatten it out and make it into a shape or you can make it into any shape you like actually. But that's, that's pretty much the shape that we look for in a conventional damper. And that's perfect. Alright guys, now what you want to do for your campfire oven 
you don't want to put it straight on top of the main fire like I said earlier it's just going to get way too hot and burn your bread to bits so what we do we just grab some of these nice hot coals we'll just put them to the side of the fire and we'll set them off there and we'll put our camp oven onto these just so that it doesn't uh, doesn't get too hot look it's not advisable to be barefoot either but uh, hey we like to take a risk around here now the easiest thing with the damper once you got it in your shape like this all you do done that's how easy the Aussie damper is lid goes on now We've got the heat on the bottom, but we also need the heat on the top. So these extra coals here, we put them on top. Now I like to use a camp oven with a raised rim. And the reason for that is when we go to lift it off, none of these coals then fall in on your damper because that, uh, look, the charcoal's not great, but you can pick them off. But it is a lot nicer when you don't have to worry about it. All right, so we're gonna put those coals on top there. We're gonna come back in about 20 minutes. 20 minutes to check on it. Half an hour I think it'll take to actually do it, but in 20 minutes we'll check on it. We'll see how it goes. All right guys, well it's been about half an hour. I actually forgot 20 minutes. I was inside having a beer. So we'll see whether I've burnt it or whether or not it's come out pretty good. Oh, look at that. Wow. All right, guys, we were lucky enough to have this come out absolutely perfect first crack. Uh, but I'm going to let it sit here for another 10 minutes and just let all that heat absorb through the rest of the bread. And then we'll cut it and see what it tastes like. All right, guys, well, the results are in. The one we did in the camp oven over the fire, the one we did in the just your normal conventional oven. And in the description, I'll put the cooking times for both of them, the ingredients for both of them in there. So if you don't have a fire that you can light in your backyard or you're not camping, you can always use the oven inside. I had the oven set on the wrong temperature, so I'd actually toasted the top of my little damper here. But um, look, we want to be as real as we can, so we just want to show you the true things that we got today. So here we go, we'll cut them open. I'll just cut it off the side. And we'll have a look at a piece out of this and we'll see how nice that came up. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. Now let's hope this poor little thing here comes up the same. Actually, that's actually come up. That actually looks better. <laughs> even, though, even though the top doesn't look as nice, it does look better. All right, guys, so I've cut a few pieces off each of the dampers. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give my kids the toughest critics in cooking in the world a taste test to see which one they like the most. I'll put a bit of their favourite maple syrup. Probably put a bit too much on there for you guys, but that's alright. We'll smooth that over. A little bit of butter. There you go. Take your pick. See which one you like. How's that one taste? Yeah, it's good. That one's good? Alright. Try this one. Now have a bite out of the other one. Do you have a favourite or you reckon they taste the same? It's the exact same. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Alright. Like, no difference. So there you have it guys. You can cook the great Australian damper either in your oven or in a campfire and they taste pretty similar like my kids didn't couldn't even tell the difference so in the comments below what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to write down how you like your damper look if you've got any different recipes than me i'd love to hear them i'd love to try cooking something different and just uh yeah make sure you click the like button guys give us a thumbs up we appreciate that and we'll see you on the next one